Linda's Pantry and today, as you see in the title, I'm going to make zucchini bread. I'm starting to get zucchini out of the garden and I've already made zucchini one of my favorite ways with the panko and the, you know, and the pesto and all that. And if you guys haven't seen that video, let me know and I'll make a batch for you on camera. Some of my newer subscribers are not going to go back through 1800 and some odd videos to find that particular recipe. But I've got, I've already grated up my zucchini and um, I'm ready to go. I've got pineapple, but I only have pineapple chunks. So I'm going to have to use the uh, Tupperware Power Chef and get that broke down into more like a crushed pineapple. I did drain the juice. I don't need the, all the juice in there as well. I've got my eggs, flour, sugar, and I'm only using brown sugar today because I want that brown sugar and pineapple. <sighs> and zucchini just go together. It's gonna be delicious. I can't wait to have you see how this comes together. I'm using avocado oil. I've got my baking soda, baking powder, salt, all that. So vanilla, we're ready to go. Cinnamon. <laughs> all right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get the pineapples prepped. Um, so you want one uh, can, this is a 20 ounce can of pineapples. I'm gonna throw that in and there may have been another teaspoon of juice left in there. Little, little juice won't hurt, but I don't want a lot in there. So we get that in the Power Chef and super easy. I've already got my bread pans. These are my cast iron lodge bread pans. I'll try to leave a link in the description box for you. One of the best inexpensive purchases I've ever made. It makes the best breads and meatloaf. Yeah, it's just wonderful. Okay, so. Here we go. And you know, you guys know I'm a kitchen gadget girl. If you've watched me for any length of time. So you just get your lid on. Oh, that's a sure tail sign that the lid's not on. <laughs> it makes that noise. Get your lid on straight. And with a couple of pulls, just like a food processor, this becomes crushed pineapple. And a lot of times I only buy chunked pineapple because I want the option to crush it or not to crush it. So that is ready for our recipe. And we'll set this aside, put this in the sink, and get on with this. <clears throat> so in my big mixing bowl, let's make sure you can see good. Um, I'm gonna give you a view. Okay, we're gonna do two eggs, and these are range-free pasture eggs. I love them. Um, you're going to get the best nutrition out of that egg. Okay. And I'm eyeballing the vanilla. A teaspoon of vanilla. This is Haitian vanilla. Um, it's delicious. Okay. We want a teaspoon of cinnamon and just a level teaspoon of cinnamon. And I'm putting that in with this. Um, you can put it in your dry ingredients uh, either way. It, it honestly is not gonna matter in the end. Now we need our, um, our zucchini and our sugar. And let's do the sugar first. So I'm gonna bring over my, oh, and the oil. Bring over my brown sugar, and that is with, uh, it's in one of the modular meats, so it stays nice and fresh. And I'm telling you, okay, so this has been in the modular meat since I redid my kitchen, and it is just as fresh and moist as the day I put it in there. And let me just give you a sample C. Look at how easy that scoops up. That is a wonderful thing. So I'm, I'm gonna want semi-packed brown sugar. Two cups. Don't pack it down hard, just kind of push it down. Grab that and get yourself another cup. Kind of generous. Okay. And yes, you could do this recipe with erythritol, and I probably will, but this is not for me. Um, this is going to be to share. I'm gonna take this to my daughters um, and I'm going to add the oil <clears throat> and I want two-thirds of a cup of oil. Now I'm using avocado oil so two-thirds of a cup. We'll just give it 
I have a one third measure. I don't want to eyeball that. So one and two. And if I was doing a keto recipe, this would totally be okay. The only thing I'd be changing in it right now would be, uh, well, can't really make it keto with the pineapple because of the sweet. It's got a lot of sugar in it already. So just, you could do the zucchini bread though and use erythritol as your sweetener. So I'm gonna get this all mixed up and your egg, you know, slightly beats with that. And see how nice and easy those chunks, I mean, I've never ever had brown sugar stay that fresh because I did my makeover, I believe my makeover in my kitchen started in January, no, well, yes, January and February is when I was doing modular mating in my kitchen. So at least um, it's been in there since February and it's July. So, okay, so now I'm gonna add my um, zucchini and I use two cups of packed, heaping packed cups of zucchini in all my zucchini recipes, doesn't matter what it is. I'm, I always use two big cups because you want to use up some of that zucchini. And this was one zucchini out of my garden. So now I have enough left to make zucchini fritters and or I am getting ready to make a tomato pie and that would be just delicious because one of my tomato pie recipes includes zucchini and zucchini blossoms. So that'll be coming up for you guys. Mmm, yum. Okay. Let's get that mixed and we'll get to the dry ingredients here. Oh, yum. And we need our pineapple. And get all of that out of there. Okay. This is making my mouth water. I've never made this particular recipe for you guys. I've made a ton of zucchini bread recipes, but never one with pineapple. So this is a real treat. It's absolutely delicious. And I will treat myself to at least one piece. Okay, next we're gonna get the dry ingredients. So we'll move that out of the way and get my dry ingredients, which is, I need all purpose flour. And we're gonna need three cups of all purpose flour. And I might even give a, maybe I'll do another quarter of a cup because of the pineapple and the juice. I don't want to, I don't want to have a problem with the mixture. So, okay, we already did our cinnamon. So now we're going to mix in the other dry ingredients, which are going to include, and these are also modular mated. This is the baking powder. I want a half a teaspoon of baking powder and it can be on the heaping side and half a teaspoon of baking soda. Same with that to balance that out. And then last but not least, some salt. And you, I'm using Himalayan pink salt and it's just shy of a half a teaspoon. You don't need too much of that. It'll balance out. Go ahead and you can whisk this together or you can just take a fork and do what I'm doing. I'm not that particular because I found it works out, right? So, all right, so into our beautiful pineapple brown sugar and zucchini mixture goes our dry ingredients. Look how fast this comes together. Now we want kind of a thick batter, so once I feel like that flour has really had a chance to absorb, um, if I feel like it's still too loose, I might add a little bit more, but I think it's gonna be just perfect. Just from memory, I've always added a little extra to the flour. But you gotta give it a minute to let it think and absorb, and yeah. Yeah, I want my batter a little bit thicker than that. 
just a little bit. So we'll grab another quarter cup or so. About a quarter of a cup. And that should be just fine. All right, yeah, perfect. When it's kind of um, hard to stir, stir you know, you, you're getting a little resistance, that's perfect. Now it's ready to get in our pans and we're gonna put that in a 350 degree oven for about an hour or when a toothpick comes out clean. All right, and I will let you know how long that is. And I'm gonna, these, this makes two loaves, so I'm gonna try to get them kind of even eyeball it and I might come back to that one and look at that you can get that to level out just by doing that all right I'll be back when we're taking this out of the oven and you get to see how beautiful these are okay so I just got the zucchini bread out of the oven and they're I mean I can barely touch these pans because um, they're screaming hot we're gonna let this cool. The bread should shrink back from the pan. It's already started a little bit. And it was in the oven exactly one hour. So 350 degrees for one hour for this recipe. Now, I do have a recipe that you use uh, almost double the amount of zucchini. If you'd like to see that recipe, I would love to share it because it is absolutely delicious. It helps you get rid of a ton of zucchini all at once. And I've got my, hamburger relish that's coming up for zucchini recipes. I also, because everybody's in the throes of zucchini heaven right now. I've also got um, some fritter recipes that I want to share with you and uh, the tomato pie, of course, with the squash blossoms and the zucchini. Oh my goodness. Okay. So if you've never had that, you need to stay tuned and let me know if you, what you make, what's your favorite thing that you make with zucchini so my viewers can uh, get some ideas of what to do. Now, I could make a cream cheese frosting for this, but I'm gonna leave it just the way it is. That way it's suitable for breakfast. Um, actually, one of these is a gift, so I'm gonna take it over as a birthday gift. All right, guys. I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe and I will leave a picture at the end of a cut portion. Um, I'm probably not going to do a live taste test just because I'm trying to stay away from sugar, but uh, I might have to taste it and make sure it's a birthday present weather worthy. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye. Don't forget to check the links below. I'll try to have a link to the cast iron I used as well as the Tupperware products. My Tupperware website is always down below. Mm. All right, we'll see you next time.